At this time of night, this shop would be a flurry of activity. Now the doors are locked, closed because of a 1912 investigation. What would you say to the people in Hayesville, if you could say any kind of comment, just to let them know that this is something that uh, you're aware of? Uh, just deep regret for the embarrassment. Deep regret for the embarrassment. Wichita firefighters are leaving New York City now, but this image behind me, and they say the people they've met here will always stay with them. Police arrested the second man in just the last few hours. Now, both men traveled to Wichita from out of state to meet their victim. Somebody went off the road. That was the most powerful thing I've ever seen Mother Nature do. you don't think you're going to be in a crash. Experts say at some point in your life, you will. Three out of four of us will be within 25 miles of home when it happens. There's no doubt seatbelts save lives, but they're designed for adults, not a child's small frame. So the, the booster seat becomes a pre-crash positioner, basically. Every year, more than 500 kids between the ages of 4 and 8 die in car crashes. Also the ages, national safety organizations and the highway patrol say children should be in booster seats. We would see the risk of injury and fatality drop quite a lot. Nine out of every ten parents say they're aware of booster seats. Only one out of 20 uses them. Troopers say it's a mistake parents make, and one mistake is all it takes. To show you why, we put three child mannequins in two cars. One is secured in a booster seat. Notice where the seat belt is positioned. The shoulder, across the chest, it's away from the neck. It's properly positioned. The other two are examples of what emergency responders say they see all too often. Well, we see a lot of times when the shoulder restraint doesn't fit the child properly. They put the shoulder restraint behind the child's back. A lap belt offers some protection, but it's not enough. A child, or even an adult, can literally fold up on impact. Still, it's better than nothing at all. This child is going to be the worst case scenario where we don't have any restraint at all. We're riding in the back seat completely unrestrained. Sergeant Gary Warner says it seems inconceivable a parent would do this, but they see it every day. If you think about it, so do you. Our test takes place at the Salina Airport. It's a training ground for the Highway Patrol. We'll be working with an accident reconstruction team that sees thousands of crashes every year. A helicopter will record the impact from the air, and a total of 11 other cameras will be rolling on the ground and inside the two cars when they collide. Three feet. Sergeant Jerry Daniels is at the wheel of this Highway Patrol cruiser when it makes contact with the other car, and he accelerates. Show you what happens in a crash with and without a booster seat. The Ford Escort slams into the other vehicle at 35 miles an hour, just below our camera mounted in the window. From this camera and one mounted outside the cars, you can see the mannequin without the shoulder strap is thrown violently from side to side. There's great risk of injury to our internal organs and our brain just from that violent forward and backward movement of our upper body. It's a different story with our child mannequin secured in the booster seat. Watch the front passenger window. It's what you don't see. What we expected to happen with the occupant that was properly restrained in the booster seat was that it stayed right where it needed to. Despite the violent force of impact, the mannequin is not thrown forward. It stays in its seat, secure and safe. That's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? You always got to wear your seatbelt. Watch for yourself what happens to the child in the rear seat. At 35 miles an hour, on impact, the unrestrained mannequin becomes nothing more than a projectile, a bullet. What you're watching takes just half a second. It takes just one time, one mistake, one excuse. We uh, weren't going to be gone that long, so we didn't buckle up. And it, we never know when a collision's going to happen. That's why so many people call an accident. Now, what we hear from parents over and over again is they say their children simply don't like riding in the booster seats. They say they're too old or they're too big. 
What we hope after watching this story tonight is that you can find a way to convince them how important it really is. Reporting live, I'm Chris Koberl, KWCH 12 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Chris.